Hello and welcome to North Texas Insider. I'm your host, Jordan James. This week we have you covered with the ups and downs of men's basketball, a recap of women's basketball, and a review of UNT signing day recruits. First, let's get straight to basketball. The Mean Green have struggled in conference play and look to change that in the three games last weekend against the Rice Owls. Early on, the Mean Green struggled to get things going as they fell behind Rice opening a 20-4 run. North Texas rallied back and found themselves only down 11 at the half. The second half, North Texas had no answers to stop Rice Marcus Davis, who finished with 18 points. Despite the heroic efforts, A.J. Lawson and, and sophomore Ryan Woodridge and his, had a season-high 21 points. The Mean Green would still go on to lose 95-80. While the men have struggled this season, the women are succeeding. They have won their third straight game. It's been an overall great team effort. Kelsey Kreiner has been on a tear here lately. She scored 25 points against the Rice and grabbed seven rebounds. And trust me, this wasn't just like a one game fluke. She dropped, not, she, had, she dropped nine assists against FIU, which was the most by a North Texas player this season. The women sit at eight in the conference and are expected to make some noise this year in the tournament under second year career coach Jaylee Mitchell. Moving on to football, the Mean Green have lost the defensive coordinator from the 2016 season. Coach Mike Eckler left North Texas and has taken a defensive coordinator position at the University of North Carolina. Coach Eckler was on the Mean Green staff last year. He previously coached at Georgia, Southern Cal, Indiana, Nebraska. We wish Coach Eckler all the best at UNC. The Denton Record Chronicle reports that Coach Troy Raffick will be promoted to defensive coordinator for the upcoming season. Staying with football, National Signing Day was February 1st and the Mean Green have picked up plenty of recruits. This was the first full recruiting class for Coach Seth Luttrell in the Take Flight campaign. Luttrell began this year highlighted by Jalen Darden and Matthew Trey Siggers. Our reporter Alex Espinosa has more on these future Mean Green athletes. National Signing Day is over, and players have finally signed their letters of intent to play college football. For North Texas, Signing Day was a big moment as 17 recruits committed to the Mean Green. North Texas head coach Seth Luttrell is excited to see what his first group of recruits can do on the football field. Our staff has worked extremely hard over the uh, really this past year. It goes back to last February after signing day of uh, trying to find uh, the best recruits. Uh, the best guys that fit our system, the best guys that fit our program and our university. While North Texas recruited five offensive linemen, the big focus this season will be on offensive talent. Matthew Trey Sigers, for example, was an extraordinary running back out of Duncanville. You know, Trey is uh, a guy that, that has been here, didn't play as a junior, uh, had to sit out his junior year, um, and then obviously uh, took a team that had won three or four games the previous year and uh, three rounds deep in the playoff. And, uh, you know, the one thing you see about my man Trey is it uh, doesn't matter if it's offense, defense, receiver, quarterback, safety, linebacker, he's very physical. Another player to be on the lookout for is wide receiver Jalen Darden, a three-star recruit out of Houston, Texas, who also played quarterback for his high school. Darden's speed and ability to keep an eye out for the ball makes him a threatening slot receiver. But the thing with Jalen is he can do a number of things for you. I mean, he can play wildcat quarterback, he can play in the slot, he can play at your running back, kind of like very similar to how we used um, a player at some of my previous spots, in and out of the backfield. With North Texas Insider, I'm Alex Espinosa. Coming up after the break, we will sit down with longtime Mean Green Radio broadcaster Hank Dickinson. Stay with us. Welcome back to North Texas Insider. I'm, I'm here with longtime radio broadcast and deputy athletic director Hank Dickinson. Thank you so much for being on the show. Appreciate the opportunity. Always good to be here. Thank you. I know towards the end of the 2016 season, they named you interim athletic director. What was that process like? Did your role, did your everyday role change or anything like that? Well, a lot more, uh, a lot more meetings, a lot more uh, involvement uh, with a lot of the VPs on campus, um, but not, not that much different. I mean, I think it was pretty obvious that we were going to go a different direction in leadership. And of mm -hmm. course, we ended up with Ren Baker, a really good young AD. And uh, I was uh, honored to be in that position for the time I was there because uh, this has been a a great place for me to work for all these years. Speaking of Ryan Baker, what has he brought to the University of North Texas? Well, I think some some uh, some good energy, uh, some great connections in the field. I was fortunate to go with Ren and, and a few of the other new uh, staff members, Jared Mosley and 
Ryan Peck to a uh, collegiate athletic leadership seminar, mm -hmm. and it was obvious to me um, how well networked he is in our industry, and college athletics is very much that. It's an industry, and so Ren has worked at a lot of different levels, um, brings a lot of great perspective, and uh, you know, his first 100 days have been a very busy, I think he's 150 days into it now, and I think you're getting ready to see a, a lot of uh, movement here in the next year or so, just in terms of growth uh, within facilities and fundraising. With you being a broadcaster for Mean Green Athletics, I know you go to all of the football games. Why was Seth Luttrell's first year so successful, in your opinion? Uh, well, I think it, it begins with Seth. I think mm -hmm. he came in and identified a locker room that was pretty uh, fractured and uh, kids that needed to, to hear a new voice and get back on the same page. And uh, even though he sprinkled in some pretty good uh, kids in terms of transfers that made it a different looking team, it was the same team that went 1-11 the year before. Mm -hmm. um, so he does a terrific job of, of uh, motivating kids, uh, making them understand how important leadership is. And I think we've only scratched the surface because it was a, a huge improvement, second best improvement in Division I. Um, but still, he knows five wins is not, not where he wants to be every year. So uh, we're at the beginning of, I think, a, a really nice run in football. So what do you make of all these Power 5 school coaches coming to take North Texas assistant coaches? Like, do you view this <laughs> as a stepping stool job in a sense? I, I think it'll always be that to a certain extent because the Power 5 chasm is so much bigger than some people understand right now. Uh, the coaches that we put together in year number one, once again, testament to Seth, mm -hmm. great staff, uh, really a, a great staff. But when you have great people, then uh, programs know that and they come after them. And uh, you know, it's, it's a tough business. If you can be given a little bit more security, more money, five-year contracts, um, you can't blame these guys for taking that. But uh, you know, I, I think Seth's already proven he's got a lot of contacts out there and knows a lot of good coaches, and we'll, we'll land on our feet with replacements. Switching to men's basketball, I know you uh, call all the men's basketball game. In your opinion, what's been going on with the team this season? Well, you know, it's been a tough year, there's no doubt. And, uh, and you've had some injuries at the wrong times to the wrong guys. Uh, Jeremy Combs really is, is the fulcrum of that team when he's healthy and he hasn't been all year and then basically had to just kind of hang it up for the rest of the year. Uh, that was a real blow. Um, the good news on this team is what we're seeing with the young guys. Just mm -hmm. today, uh, you know, we find out that we've now had two different freshman players of the week. Um, Ryan got it today and earlier AJ got it. So, I mean, the, the youth on this team is highly encouraging. And, and I feel bad for Coach Benford because nobody's worked harder. Uh, he's just a tremendous guy to be around all the time. And hopefully they can string together a few more wins down the stretch this year. Speaking of Coach, Coach Benford, there's been some talk about there needs to be a different voice in the locker room. What is your opinion on that for his next season? Well, I think it's a, it's a tough, tough job. And, and it's not made any easier when you lose some, some critical game time to injuries um, because that forces you to kind of uh, put what you had planned on doing to the back burner. Um, regardless of what happens with Coach Benford, um, I've worked with a number of coaches here, and I can't, I really can't tell you a better person that I've worked with. I think he's a, a terrific recruiter, a great guy for young people, and, and like you say, sometimes you see people do things when no one's looking. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's the measure of a man or a woman, what they do when, when no one else is watching. He's just done too many good things for too many people. I, I'm, I will always be very impressed with him. But, you know, moving forward, he knows it's a game where you have to win, and, mm -hmm. and they haven't done enough of that this year. Um, there's six games left in conference play. Where do you see North Texas going the rest of the season? Well, getting the win on the road this week and, and, and uh, finally getting that road win out of the way was big. You've got four left at home. I think uh, UTEP Thursday night's a much improved team over what they were coming out of the non-conference. That won't be easy. UTSA with Steve Henson, new head coach, has done well. But you're at home, and traditionally we've been able to win at home. So if, uh, if this home stand can go well, uh, then you've still got a chance to make some noise and perhaps get to Birmingham and um, shake things up a little bit. Switching to women's basketball, what do you think about the job that Jaylee Mitchell has done in her second year being here? At the Tremendous. Home? You know, uh, I've, I've known her since she was a player. Um, I've known her in two different iterations as an assistant coach here. So um, I, I literally have watched her grow up um, in terms of coming from a player to a coach. And uh, I think she's probably learned a lot in her time with Karen Aston. I noticed some of the same um, focus that Karen brought to it. But, uh, you know, I think she really cares about North Texas in, in a way that you would would want from any head coach having played here all-time leading scorer she wants this to get back to the level it was when she played here and and then improve upon that um, kind of shortened her bench as the season's mm -hmm. gone along I think she knows where to have people and uh, you know the times that I've been able to watch her play I just I like the way the team understands its roles that's good coaching thank you so much once again thank you so much for being a part of this show it was a pleasure talking to you 
Coming up on North Texas Insider, we'll take a look at CUSA Game of the Week and the, and the freshman who took home the title for Player of the Week. Stay with us. December 20th, 2016. That was the last time the North Texas men's basketball team won a game. This past week, North Texas continued their conference play, taking, on, taking a trip to the Sunshine State to take on Florida Atlantic University. With, the conference tournament, with conference tournament aspirations on the line, the North Texas played a desperation brand of basketball. North Texas went into the half with a commanding 35 to 24 lead. Senior Jamaica Reese played in the second half. It appeared to be the difference maker as he finished the game with 22 points and nine rebounds. With the help of Shane Tamara, 18 points and nine rebounds, North Texas has snapped their 11 game losing skid with the win of 70 to 64. Currently, North Texas is sitting last in Conference USA. However, with the win, they are now one game away from claiming the last conference tournament spot. With six games remaining, North Texas has some work to do. Middle Tennessee is expected to make some noise in the conference tournament. So far, they only have suffered one loss at the hands of UTEP. Another team to keep a lookout for is Louisiana Tech. They're a very young, athletic, physical team who's capable of going on a run. All I know is going to be exciting conference tournament in Birmingham, Alabama, and I am looking forward to it. We all know this has been a rough year for the North Texas men's basketball team. However, there has been one bright spot, freshman A.J. Lawson. Not only has he caught the eyes of Mean Green fans, Conference USA has also taken notice. For the second time in his short career, the Bryan native was named Conference USA Freshman Player of the Week. Lawson finished the game with 31 points against Rice. Get this, off the bench. With his 31 points performance against Rice, Lawson became the first North Texas player this season to score 30 or more points in a game. His average is 11 points a game, was ranked number one among freshmen in the conference. So far this season, Lawson has 14 double-figure games. He also happens to lead his team in scoring this season. It appears the Mean Green have struck gold with number 12. After the break, I have a story on one of the Mean Green recruits right here in Denton and his journey to UNT. Stay with us. With the 2017 National Signing Day in the books, the North Texas football team has officially signed 18 new players. Head coach Seth Latrell said this class helped shore up the team's depth across the offensive line and the wide receiver position. The biggest kept secret of this class is Denton Ryan's own, Tyreek Davis. There's a saying in life that all great things must come to an end. The Raiders' amazing season ends in Harlan. This journey has been long. I mean, the hard work is starting to pay off, and I'm just thankful. After accounting for nearly 120 tackles and rushing for over 1,000 yards as a senior, Tyreek Davis' time as a Ryan Raider has come to an end. One, two, two three. Side away. No, it's not the end of his playing career. It's the start of a new era. With the stroke of a pen, it's official. Tyreek is taking his talents to the University of North Texas. I never pictured this happening, like me getting a scholarship to play football or anything like that. So, I mean, I'm definitely not going to take it for granted. During his time at Ryan, they experienced a lot of success, from reaching the state semifinals to going 27-2 and the past two seasons. One thing is certain. Number 21 will be missed. Tyreek is going to be missed. He's, a, he's one of those guys that can't really be replaced by one person. Um, it's going to take a, a group effort to replace a guy like Tyreek. As Tyreek prepares to embark on a new journey, his high school running back coach, Patrick Cobbs, has already etched himself in history at UNT by getting inducted into the North Texas Athletic Hall of Fame. You know, it's, it's a special place to me. It's a place that changed my, it's changed my life, um, helped me become a man, and I knew we could do the same thing with him. After spending four years at Den Ryan High School, Tyreek is looking forward to his next chapter at the University of North Texas. I don't like to be just given anything. Um, I would like to accomplish just being a great academic person also in the classroom and not just on the field. No matter where life takes him, even if it's 10 minutes up the road, his mom, Kamisha Darrow, will always be there for him. I'm going to be their biggest supporter and their biggest credit. And to the extreme left or to the extreme right, mommy's going to be there and throughout life. And that's the way it's going to go. Tyree grew up in a single parent household most of his life. Despite what pundits predict, his mom has a different message. Being a single parent until me and my husband six years ago, every statistic was against him. And I pushed my kids, you know, 
everything that's a typical life is life, but you have to get out of it what you want, so you work for what you want. As Tariq prepares to enter this new phase in his life, one thing is certain, he will always have the love and support from his coaches, family, and his new family at the University of North Texas. Good luck, Tariq. We can't wait to see you in the green and white. That's all I got for North Texas Insider. Join us again next time for everything Mean Green Sports on here at NTTV.